Hi, I'm Ted Patterson of Critical Path Training. In this video screencast tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a multi-column field type for SharePoint 2010. This is a part two video. In part one, called Creating Custom Field Types for SharePoint 2010, I showed you how to get started creating a Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint project and how to add the basic files inside there. So in this video, we're going to follow on and get into some more advanced concepts in creating multi-column field types. Let's go ahead and get started. If I go up to our test site, I've created a list with the title of stores. We have two stores already. So far, I only have a single column based on the title site column, and I've changed the display name to store. But what we'd like to be able to do is when someone adds in a new item or updates an existing item, we'd like to also track the address. And we're going to create a custom field type that's a multi-value custom field type to be able to track all the different pieces of data that constitute a single address. So let's go back to our project. Now to create this multi-value custom field type, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a special user control that contains an HTML layout called a rendering template. Now we're going to go to the add menu and we're going to add a SharePoint map folder. And we're going to add that right to the template control templates directory. And then inside there, we're going to go ahead and add a new item, which is a user control. And this user control we're going to call the United States Address Rendering Template. Now one other point that I'm going to make is that when you create one of these rendering templates, it has to be in a user control, a .ascx file, and it has to be pushed directly into the control templates directory, not in a subdirectory. So because this has to be inside of a directory, that Microsoft also puts files in. I'm just going to take my file name and put project name dot at the beginning of its name to prevent conflicts. Well, now that we've got that inside there, well, I'm going to go ahead and go into large mode here. Now, I'm going to do a bunch of HTML layout, but what I've done is I've put it all into a snippet to make it go a little bit quicker here. Now, with my snippet, notice that we have a HTML table and it has a bunch of text boxes txt address one well if I go ahead and close this up notice that I just have some HTML layout I have some styles but everything is inside the SharePoint rendering template control and this is given an ID of United States address rendering template now that we've created this rendering template let's go ahead and close that down Let's go ahead and we're going to add a new class. We're going to add a new class file and this is going to be the United States address. Now I'm going to add a couple using statements up to the top. We're going to go ahead and add using statements for system.web and system.web dot UI and system dot web dot UI dot web controls because we're going to use some of the controls from up there and also there is a class that I have to inherit from which is part of the SharePoint server-side object model. Now there's actually two different classes that I'm going to add in. One class is going to be the field type itself but before we put in the field type, what we're going to do is we're going to add a second, which is the field control type. Now once again, I have some snippets that's going to make this a little bit easier. So if we say insert snippet, and the first one that we're going to use is the field control type. Let's go ahead and add that in. And so inside here, and there's one other namespace microsoft.sharepoint.webcontrols because that's where the base field control comes from and that's the class that we have to inherit from to create a field control type. 
Now the field control type has a method or it's a read only property that we have to override and what's important to see is we return back a string and that string has to be the identifier that we've defined inside of our rendering template. Now the other things inside of this class right here is that well we have a field for each of the controls in the rendering template we want to get at and also note that inside the field control class we use the this.templateContainer.findControl to obtain references so we can assign a reference to each of our fields. Now really it's inside of a overridden method named value that we do the work. And when it's time to write our values to the content database, we create a new SP field multi-column value. We take our controls and we assign each of the control values to one of the elements inside of this SP multi-column value object and return that and it gets written to the database. When there's an existing item and we need to bring it up in edit mode, well, SharePoint's going to call our set method and so we're able to get what was inside the content database. We cast it to an SP multi-column value and now we just do the opposite where we grab the elements out and we basically assign them to the controls. Okay, now one last thing that we've done that we're going to do to get the code ready is now we're going to actually implement the field type itself. So once again, I'm going to use snippets here and we're going to add in this field control. Now the field control, like the one we did in the first video how to, inherits from one of the special SP field types. This one is SP field multi-column. And as we showed in the earlier screencast tutorial, you need to add two different constructors. Now in this case right here, we're also going to add this one other method. And this other method is going to be an overwritten version of field rendering control. Now usually, well in the first video screencast on field controls, we didn't have a overridden field rendering control. So our underlying base class specified what it was and we just used some of the, the built-in rendering templates. Now we're using our own. So we override field rendering control. We create an instance of our base field control drive class. We set the control.field name with the internal name and return that back. Okay, there's one extra thing called get field as HTML value. And so if we go ahead and take a look at this, we'll see this in just a second. Well, the last thing that we need to do to actually make it work is to go to our field types.xml file and add in one more field type element for this. And once again, we have a snippet that we're going to use and once we've added our snippet in place right here you can see that the United States address that we're going to add in is a fairly simple thing and up top here we're going to also get the name of our SharePoint project and put that in place now we have these items in place right here. We're going to go ahead and let's go to our list back in the site because now we want to test it out. So if we go back to the list and if we go back to list settings and then we choose to add a new column. Well, we're going to add the column address, but we don't see address yet because we haven't deployed our project. So now let's go back here and let's deploy and after we deploy it pushes the new version of the field types underscore wingtip fields that XML file out into the local farm so that if I go ahead and I do a refresh what we should now see is that our new custom field type is going to show up so we can test it well, there's the wingtip domestic address. So let's go ahead and put address right here. We'll pick domestic address and we'll go ahead and choose OK. 
Well, now that we've done that, let's go back and we'll go back to our list. And inside of our list, we'll take one of these particular items and we'll say edit item. And now we can see the rendering template as brought up by the field control. So let's say the first one is 123 Main Street and there's no second line address and that is in Tampa, Florida with a zip code of 33333. We'll go ahead and hit save. And then secondly, we'll go to this item right here and we'll say edit item. And this time we're on 123 and this is going to be on East Street, except this time we're in Suite 1234. Once again, we'll be in Tampa, Florida, and 33345. And at this point, the last thing I want to point out is that how do we introduce these line breaks and make sure that for addresses that don't have a second address element, they don't get the line break with nothing in it, but we do have a second line inside here. So if we go back to our code and we look to our field type, we have overwritten a method called field value as HTML. And this method, if you overwrite it, is called to produce the HTML that's shown here in regular list view. And as we've seen, we can simply take the value that's passed to us as a system.object, convert it to an SP field multi-column value, crack out the values, and so we'll go ahead and put the first address line inside there. Then we'll see if the second line is empty. If, if it is, leave it blank. If not, introduce a line and put it inside there and then return the control back after putting the HTML address with the second comma space. There's the state, two spaces, then the zip code to get exactly the HTML layout that you're after.